The Bible says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of Almighty. Now listen, today, we want to pray for those of you that are struggling with us today. We bind the hand of the adversary, and we decree and declare that there will be absolutely no fear in your home. Wherever you are, we make that place a sanctuary. That ground is holy ground. So, Father, those that are streaming today, those that are watching today, we pray, Father, that you would bless their family, bless their children, bless their homes. Father, we release joy, we release peace, and, Father, according to your word, you said that there, you have given us a sound mind because you have not given us fear. So we release a sound mind over you. We release the joy and the love of God over every person that is watching with us. Listen, y'all, whatever you do, stay tuned because there's more coming. But we want you to join us for a unique worship experience. Follow us online. Join us. Stay tuned. There's more. Come on. Clap your hands. Come on. Let's celebrate. Come on. favorite Sunday school story is that of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego thrown in the fiery furnace. The captain of the adversarial army looks in, says, hold up, wait a minute. I thought we put three in. I see a fourth man. I hope y'all didn't think that the coronavirus internet crusade was over because you just heard the three. Bishop Murphy, myself, Bishop Sapp, there's a fourth man and he's getting ready to come in. Pastor Antonio Matthews is coming to us live from Denver, Colorado, the effective and efficient pastor of the real church. I'm glad to call him a friend, a brother, and a son, and I'm excited to introduce him to you on tonight. He's got a razor sharp mind and an imagination that illumines the text like none other. Let's go to Denver and hear the word of God in the middle of this crisis. Don't panic. Praise him.
day that the Lord has made and we are rejoicing and we're going to be glad in it. What a beautiful day it is in spite of what we're dealing with in our nation. God is still worthy to be praised and what a joy it is for me to be able to come into your homes tonight, uh, this evening in this quarantine revival, just to share with you just something that the Lord has placed on my heart to really give unto you, to encourage you and to push you and to give you strength in this season. I want to thank my covenant brothers who are all brilliant and I'm appreciative just to be able uh, to be named amongst them. Um, a few years ago, I went through uh, a, a very difficult season of my life, a season where um, I, I questioned God on, on many areas of life. I questioned my existence. I questioned my purpose. I, I questioned how could my faithfulness lead me into a season of a pit that I didn't know how to get out of. I was battling with depression. I was battling with uh, suicidal thoughts. And um, it, it happened when uh, I, I lost in one day everything. Um, I lost job. I lost money. I lost so many things. And I, I went home that evening after losing everything and watch this. I sat in my room and I started to write. Now, while I had everything, my creativity was limited because I assumed that I was doing well enough uh, and I didn't need anything else. And so um, I started writing out visions and plans and I started writing out all this stuff and the creativity came back in abundance. Hear me. My creativity didn't come back to me until I lost everything I thought I needed. It was a, it was a season where I found me when I lost everything outside of me. And God has us in this weird season. He has us in this weird place where he has us in a season now of isolation uh, or quarantine. And I believe the intent of it is for us to really come back to the original purpose of who we are and come back into the original nature of who we are. And I wanna to talk to you just for about another 15 minutes from the topic, it's gonna help you find it. Meaning that this season that we're in uh, this quarantine season, God, God's going to show you something while you're locked up that's going to be able to sustain you when you come out of this season. I believe that this particular season is a season to where you're going to find the very thing you need inside of you that's going to help you sustain when Corona is over. I believe that sometimes God will allow a calamity to expose your creativity. And God will allow a crisis to get us back centered on the central theme of our existence. God will allow it just so he can get you back to thinking clearly. Sometimes calamities bring clarity because it makes you get still. And in this season, God has us in a steel place. It's a weird place because we're so used to moving and we're so used to going about. But he has us in a place where he's got us still. He's got us quiet. He's got us positioned right where he wants us. And it's the same for this particular woman in our text in 2 Kings chapter 4. There's a woman who goes to the prophet and says, hey, my my." husband is dead. Uh, life as I now know it is different. My covering is gone. My provision is gone. Life has shifted for this woman. Life has suddenly had a plot twist that she didn't anticipate. And now she's in the middle of a season where she's stuck at home trying to cover her boys because the creditors are coming to take what she has. And she goes to the prophet and she says, man of God, you knew my husband was a faithful guy. 
but he's now gone and I have nothing to offer them and they're coming to take my sons. And the prophet asked her one simple question. What do you have in your house? And she says, well, I, I only have this, this cruise, this little bit of this oil that I've been walking past through, and through all these seasons. Watch this. Because my provision had caused me to become blind to that which was supposed to be my sustainability. So I had everything around me. So I didn't notice what I didn't. I didn't notice what I had because I had everything. And sometimes God will put you in a place where he'll take everything from around you so that you can see everything on the inside of you. And he, she says, all I have is this oil. And he says, go get some pots because what you've been walking past and what you've been minimizing and what you have been taken for granted and what you have not put to use is going to be the very thing that's going to sustain you during this season and the seasons to come. She found her oil in her crisis. And I'm believing people of God that in this season, that this crisis, this particular season, it's going to help you find the oil in your life that's going to help you sustain your life once Corona is over. I'm believing that God is setting us up in this season where he's locking us in the house to find and to revive and to reinvigorate and to refresh the creative juices that have, that have been lacking in our lives. And God says, I had to lock you up to free you, man. He said, I had to lock you up to get what I put in you out of you. And I'm believing people of God that there's plenty, plenty of you in this season. You're going to find your oil because God says, I'm putting you in the place. Hear me. If you come out of Corona and you have not found your oil, you have mismanaged this season where he's allowed you the capacity to be at home, to be still, and to locate the oil in your house so that you and your families can live. God will set us up in moments of crisis just to bring moments of clarity to us so that when we come out, we, are, we have everything we need to sustain us in this next season. So God says, I'm going to help the creative find the creative that's inside of them that's been lacking. I'm going to help the person find the oil that they've been mismanaging all this time because everything around them was flowing smoothly. I'm going to help them find the oil in their life so that when they come out of this season, they'll have everything you need. God will send us in an unexpected plot twist of life that will have us going one way and that will come into our existence and shift us into another direction. Corona is shifting us into another whole direction. And you know what I found out in the Latin word, in the Latin uh, Latin language, the word Corona literally means crown, literally means it means the crown that God had to put you in a season to make you realize who you really were, that when you come out of this, you're going to come out of this knowing you are a king's son, a king's daughter, and that everything in you is going to come out of you so it can sustain you so you don't have to go back to life as normal. If you go back to life as normal after this season has lifted, you have mismanaged this time. God knows exactly what he's planted inside you. And he knows what kind of soil or what kind of situation you need for it to come out of you. And sometimes it's frustrating to us um, because we get a glimpse 
And we assume that because of the glimpse we've gotten, that it doesn't take everything God sends us through uh, just to get out of us what he's put in us. And God says, no, 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 you only got the glimpse, but I wrote the narrative. I wrote the story. Come here. And the plot twist is only a surprise to the participants or to the people who are watching the movie. The author is never surprised because the author wrote the script. And God says, I'm not surprised by Corona. I'm not surprised by this pandemic. I'm not surprised by this season. I'm not surprised by where you are. I'm not surprised by what you're dealing with. I'm not surprised by what you lost. I'm not surprised by what you endured. I'm not surprised by what you overcame. I'm not surprised by what you in now. He says, because I wrote the story. And if your endurance is strong enough to deal with it and to get out of it, I promise you this plot twist is going to raise you into a whole nother level. Would you just do me a favor and slap high five yourself and say new levels after this, new levels, new levels. There is, there is a book that's coming out of you. There is a creative that's coming out of you. The God has said, I'm placing you in a place where you're going to see, watch this, what you haven't seen. Because now you have to find it. Yeah. He says, you got to find it. Woman, what do you have in your house? That means I've got to go and take an assessment of what I have now uh, in my life caused to become normal. And to see the extraordinary in that which I deem normal. What do you have in your house? Why do you think God has us in the house in this season? It's springtime. The weather is nice. It's coming together. We want to be outside. And God says, no, I'm going to do you like Moses. I'm going to let you look at the beauty from the inside. He says, because there's some stuff you've been walking past. And there's some stuff you've been overlooking. And there's some things in your life you've taken for granted. And there's some things that's, that's in your house that's in your possession, that's in your space that I've planted there to sustain you after this season is over. He says, but don't mismanage it. He says, find your oil. And I don't know who I'm talking to in this season. I don't know who I'm talking to that's watching me all over the country. The Lord is saying, you've got to find your oil. You, you've got to find the very thing you need so that when the creditors come to take your boys, you have what you need to pay them all. When the creditors come to take that which you have given birth to, you won't be in debt. But when the creditors come to steal that which you've given birth to, you, you won't be in debt. He says, this season of life you're in, you've, you've got to find your oil. Watch this. And you've got to get connected to people who will help you find that which you've been overlooking. She says, prophet, my, my husband is dead. Um, I'm used to him taking care of me. Can you help me? Watch this. Can you help me? Because now if he helps her not find her oil, but if he brings her out of debt, now she's dependent upon him. And he says, I'm delivering you from dependency. And I don't know who I'm talking to in this room tonight. I don't know who I'm talking to. God says, I'm delivering you from depending on people who are not helping you genuinely. Because every time they sow into you, they jot down a budget line item to bring it back up once you come up. He says, no, I'm going to put you around people who's not going to give you a handout, but who's going to help you see that which is supposed to come out of you. I'm going to put you around people that's going to help you see what you've been overlooking. I'm going to put you around people that's going to help you see that which you've been walking past. What do you have in your house? And God is saying, man, you've been missing it all this time. You, you've been missing it. And watch this. I didn't see what was in me until I lost everything around me. I didn't see what God was trying to do in me until I had to see it because God will place you in a season where you have nothing left but to find your oil.
And I don't know who you are. I don't know where you are. But don't mismanage this time. Don't mismanage this season. Don't, don't mismanage what God is doing in your life. Don't, don't mismanage this particular sect. There was a, I don't know if you've seen the movie, uh, the, the Netflix series called All American. And, and, and during this time of Corona, I've also been binge watching Netflix. And it's a story called All American about this young kid who's a great football player, but I don't want to start still, uh, ruin the plot, but he becomes an incredible All-American, not just on the field, but off the field as an activist in his community. And his teacher asked him, he said, um, write me an essay on your greatest inspiration. Um, and he began to ask people about this particular narrative that he had to write and ask them who their greatest inspiration was. Um, and then he had a story like mine where he had, um, hadn't seen his father in years. And at the end of the, the essay, he starts writing and he says, my greatest inspiration was the absence of my father because had he been around, had he not left, I wouldn't have become the man I am today. My greatest inspiration, watch this, was the absence of something that I thought I needed, but realized I became better because it wasn't there. And what is God going to shift from your life so that you can see the greatest inspiration in your life came when you found your purpose in things that you lost. You found what God was trying to show you in a season of loss. God says this season, this season, you've got to find your oil. You've got to find it. You've got to find your oil so that when this is over, you'll be able to be sustained, not dependent upon anything else, but you'll be able to be sustained in the seasons to come. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray that those that are listening to me tonight, I pray, God, that you would bless them and give them the capacity to see what they have been missing and, and see what they have been mismanaging. And let this season cause them to find the very oil in their life that's going to be the catalyst for generational wealth in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. You see the information on there. If you want to sow into the ministry tonight, you can do so right now. It's on the screen. It's on the bottom of this particular post. Please, I encourage each and every one of you, every one of you, if you're going to find your oil, it's going to be in your seed as well. I want every one of you to grab a seed, grab a significant seed tonight and sow into the ministry. And I want you to put in the memo. I'm finding my oil. I'm finding my oil. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God strengthen you. Peace. I, I'm, I'm rarely speechless, but in this moment, I don't have anything to say. I have nothing to say. And literally in this moment, I can't even hear what you got to say but I want your actions to speak louder than your words. You were blessed in this moment. I want you to sow a seed that is a sign that would suggest I'm appreciative for what I've received. Do you know why the coronavirus is so dangerous? Why it's so lethal? Because it comes with no signs. It comes with no evidence. The reason why you are so powerful, the grace is so heavy on your life, because it's coming with a sign, wonder, miracles, evidence. I want you to come into agreement. I want you to sow a seed right now to any of the platforms that we've laid out before you tonight. I want you to sow a seed in anticipation for the sign, the wonder, the miracle, and the evidence. It's all coming. 
that's coming to you soon. I'm excited about it. So a seed in anticipation for what God has already done, for what he's about to do, for what he's doing right now. Watch God do it. Tomorrow night, my brother is coming all the way from Jacksonville, Florida, Bishop Rudolph McKissick Jr. I only got one question. Won't he do it? Meet me here tomorrow night. We've been crashing the internet all week long. Tomorrow is our rising crescendo. I got goosebumps thinking about it. I want you to go tell everybody that the revival is taking off and we're lifting up to a whole nother dimension. Have a great night and do me a favor. Go wash them hands.